And I'd urge the policy makers, get proximate to the issues. As you say, Pastor Angie, I would never have known what goes on in those prisons, yeah, the cries. Actually been in How that. are you writing policies of things you care about? That you haven't touched you have the not lives touched. of the people. You, you don't even know who these people are. You're in this classy office, but you don't know what's going on in the ground. Mm. Get to the ground. Get to the ground and see these people who are, because these are lives. These are lives. These are lives. Mm. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's Mwenyenchi Monday. We are on another marathon of a series here. And I hope you're not just watching the series and crying. After crying, action. We need action. Find a prison that's next to you and what you need to do. And uh, please, when you shop for your monthly shopping, buy some Vaseline, buy some diapers, buy some milk, buy some Cerelac, buy some spoons, cups, whatever, and drop it off at the nearest um, either rehabilitation center or prison that is near you. Do something. Don't just get emotional. Yeah. Teresa, yeah. Hey, first of all, let me also take you back. Yeah. This is your husband. Yes. You have been praying for husband. You told me I was here <laughs> laughing for very, very... You have been praying for husband for long. God is not answering. Yeah. Just when the drama, you're in the thick of drama, yeah. here comes the husband. Yeah. And then also the funny thing about the husband, which I'm sure you things have changed. Guys in state who are telling him, let me tell you. Yeah. Run for the hills. Who is that? What? Yeah. She has which court case? <laughs> They're telling him Kenyan women. Hey, please, yeah. eh? Yeah. You went to look for your mother. Yeah. Come back. Yes. So all sorts of drama is taking place. Yeah. I can't wait to the day I meet your husband. Because yeah. God is a comedian like that. I mean, it's just the place to bring all this time we could have brought a husband. Yeah. But he brings him now. Yeah. And he's been such a great support. Mm -hmm. I've never met Jorogen, but yeah. everything I've heard about him has mm -hmm. been absolutely amazing. Yeah. And sticking to his guns yeah. and flowing yeah. and saying, this is my wife. Yeah. And we're moving and uh, nothing is going to stop us. But I think one of the saddest things uh, for me mm -hmm. is that he came to prison every day. It's not sad. It's sad yeah. because I can't imagine him living there every day. I can't imagine him traveling there every day. He came every day. Every day. Traveled there, yeah. then leaving you there. Yeah. Plus his child. Yeah. Th those are moments that, oh, no, how? Yeah. And then first of all, let me ask you because I knew you were a Christian. Yeah. The first day, you know me when I went to the prison, I was like, oh, Jesus, I prayed for everyone I know never to come here. Yeah. The, he, it's traumatizing even just to visit. Yeah. Let alone to stay. Yeah. But how did you feel your first night? How did you sleep? Did you sleep? Did you, did you think God had abandoned you? I have so many questions, yeah. Teresa. Yeah. What was that about? How did you feel about that? And how do you feel about seeing your husband every day? Yeah. Come and visit you and go, first of all, kudos that he came. Because yeah. a lot of people were abandoned by yeah. spouses, yeah. by family, mm -hmm. but he came. Yeah. Yeah. But how did you feel? Did you feel like God had abandoned you? Yes. And you were a good girl. You yeah. were a good girl. You yeah. were praying to God, mm -hmm. you know, you were really flowing yeah. with Jesus. So yeah. what, what, was, how, what was going on through your head? Um, it was such a, an abrupt interruption yes. in a way that I just couldn't comprehend. And especially being a Christian. Yeah. You know, things can happen in this world. But when you know you've committed your life to God and your everything to God, for sure you know he's got your back when you've been pushed through the wall. And so for this particular one, I knew God's got my back. And I knew in that court, God of God, the God of justice, the one who I follow and embrace and who I've been taught throughout my life by my parents. And I've seen him come through for me, even to getting me the scholarship and mm. blessing me with the career that I loved so much. I had tried and tasted who he is. So him. for this one, I was so sure he would vindicate me. Even if everyone else would get it wrong, God wouldn't get it wrong. So even by the time the third count was being dropped, I knew, you see, this is my God. This is, this my is the God. one I serve. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. So when the conviction and the <coughs> sentencing happened, I wondered where God was. My first question to him was, how could you let the evil ones take the day. <coughs> How could you allow your daughter be embarrassed and ashamed in front of the whole world? This was your moment to show who you are, but you didn't. Why? And that was the question I went asking him 
even in prison? Mm. How could you allow this? And at some times I would ask myself, was, what's the greatest sin I have ever committed that's so unforgivable that God has given this to me as a punishment? punishment. But I put that aside at some point as I got overwhelmed with the reasons why these women had come. And <coughs> the more I got my eyes off me yeah. and the attention oh. off me. Wow. Getting over yourself. And more to the women, more to the children. And mm. thinking to myself, when I was one year old, when I was two years old, what my parents would do for me. But here are children <coughs> whose mothers cannot be able to do what mine did. And knowing after this one year, what I would do for Shiko, for Oma. And these women here will not be able to. to do. And seeing these women leave and then come back. And I asked them, within the year they would come back. Within that one year, I'm like, why would you consider coming back here? But it's not considered, they have no options. Exactly. So, as this turned around, I now started aligning with what God would have. And he started showing me the bigger picture. Wow. And the more I died to self, hmm. the more the picture hmm. became bigger. You're preaching to me and to everyone out there, my goodness. Oh my goodness me. And let me tell you, Pastor Angie, that's what it's been since leaving prison. The more I die to, to self, self, the more the picture becomes bigger and the more the clean start platform grows. Wow. And as we serve more women and more girls and more children, the more I get satisfied, me as Teresa Njoroke, the more I realize dreams that I had and had put them aside because they were too huge, too big mm -hmm. of dreams for mm. me to achieve. Mm. But the more he satisfies the desires of my heart, mm. the more he satisfies what I'd love for my children. And it's been step by step. And I think it's a message to everyone out there because when I was in the banking sector, mm. I used to think to myself, I have so many needs that I can't be able to meet. So I need to, co to continue focusing and concentrating on me mm -hmm. to be able to meet these needs. Mm -hmm. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Mm, Matthew 6, 33. And all these things will be added unto and you. And he said, because he knows you need them. You know, we never read that one. After it says, not this added, we always talk about added. But it continues to say, because he knows you need them. He knows. Pastor Angie, surrendering to God. My goodness. Surrendering. Jesus. When you're in that rat race, it's very difficult. Because you're seeing like you're the one in control. That's the problem. In charge. You're the one in control. You're the one in charge. God forbid God comes and shows who's really in charge and who's really in control. But even for me when I read your story, because I would read and tears would come, because it's emotional. You yeah. have to cry. Yeah. I, I'd cry first of all the shock of, of imagining myself in prison. I think I would collapse. But I, I was also having a conversation the other day with, with one, of, one, one of the Clean Start ladies. And she said one of the things that gave her the ability to stay, she realized there are people in here. These are not animals. These are people. So if they are here, let the brain align yeah. to Kwa Pasasa. Yeah. We must, uh, and they're living and they're surviving. So even you get into living and, and thriving mode. Yeah. But I love the way you said it. First of all, you need to get over yourself. Yeah. That's very important. Yeah. Whatever it is <laughs> and whatever situation, whatever it is and whatever situation God has put you in, yeah. you need to get over yourself. Yes. Second one, when I read, I said, oh my goodness, Lord, did she have to go to prison? to start this but fortunately or unfortunately there are some things you have to experience yeah. so you can have compassion yeah. you see the compassion you're talking with yeah. cannot come from textbook cannot come from outside here looking in True. that compassion can only come yeah. when you've experienced it exactly. then i'm thinking of genesis 50 20 which where god was telling um joseph even what they meant for harm yeah. i'll turn into good yeah. so somebody meant all this for harm yeah. but god turned it into good we could have looked for the one million, but he didn't want. Yeah. He said, go through this process, yeah. my daughter. Yeah. And he did well because I, I didn't know it was a year, yeah. which only served eight months. Yeah? Yes. But anyway, eight months is too long. Even a yeah. month is uh, enough to drive anyone crazy. Yeah. But at least it was, 
So he wanted you to go through that process. Yeah. Because then again, I was seeing the platforms that that opened for you. Yeah. You've done a TED, is it a TED talk? Yeah, I've done a TED talk. You've been to, a, I don't know how many nations in the world. Yes. When I was recently with you in Geneva, I didn't know, I yeah. just saw you in Geneva and Facebook and yeah. I also reached out to you there. Yeah. There was a whole concert yes. held to raise funds, funds yeah. for Clean Start. Yes. People want to plug in. You've just come from another conference, I think, in Atlanta, yes. where people are doing similar things. So yes. there's a there's a wokeness, and people yeah. want to do something. Yeah. But imagine, Teresa, it's sad. To, okay, it's sad and not sad. Yeah. But if you hadn't gone through that process, mm. you'd be giving people fuel. Who That's would true. know that the women cry at night? Exactly. Who would know that they cry? Who would have sat down and really talked to them, yeah. so that you know what what is what is their what is their cry? Yeah. And the, I think for me, the hardest thing is that they're crying for their children. Yeah. I think even as I've been relating with the women of Clean Start, it was it's been amazing to see the husbands yes. that have stayed around. Yeah. Yet people are going through here flimsy excuses. They've parted ways. They've walked out. Prison must be hard. It is. And the, to see the spouses that have stayed yeah. and walked with them through this process, I'm so encouraged. No? When yeah. we're saying actually there's no family, yes, yeah. there is, and yeah. marriage works. Yeah. And people can stand, if we're not fickle, you can stand beside people to go through the most hardest yes. situation if you're a faithful person yes. as well. Because that's mm. what I've seen. I've seen faith. Yeah. I've seen faith and I've seen faithfulness. Mm. Mm. So there have been so many encouraging, amazing stories yeah. um, that I've, I've, I've heard. Yeah. yeah and, I, and I'm really definitely plugging into that. Yeah. Um, and especially to try to get women not to go to prison. Yeah. Especially I told you when I met the 25 year olds, yeah. that's when I cried. Mm. And they're there for life. Yeah. And I'm thinking, no, mm. you don't want to be here for life. Mm. How are you possibly going to survive here for life? Mm. And if you had known about the lifestyle choices that you made, mm. you wouldn't have made this choice to true. be here. Yeah. Very, very true. I really felt, felt bad about that one. And even the mother and daughter who are incarcerated that one mm. really touched my heart mm. that you can be in here yeah. you and your daughter yeah. and i asked you a question so mm. because they know you know where you're bougie you're yeah. posh you're a branch manager mm. do they teach you differently do they want to treat do they want to cut you down to size because because you come from the right side of the track so how was the experience for you did you just first you said you were, let me just hear your answer first yeah yeah what definitely uh because we all have to be equal yes uh, in prison in there in there mm. and just the environment mm. brings you down it takes away all your confidence and your esteem the language that's used in prison and how you've got to address back the, the madams wardens. yeah you know yeah just the culture within prison really brings you down mm. and there's nothing special mm. in there mm. nothing special at all mm. it's very tough tough, tough, tough situations mm. that really takes away your esteem and your confidence. Mm. Yeah, it does. Mm. So it really did take away my esteem. It take, took away my confidence. Um, it's been very many years of rebuilding my confidence, mm. rebuilding Teresa. Mm. Um, but as you say, it's when you're very close and proximate to these issues that you really get to understand, mm. that I really get to understand these women. Mm. And I remember you asked me, are you giving them false hope? Yes. And I started by saying, I'm a proud Kenyan who's also very hopeful. It's not false hope. I have a lot of hope. And my hope actually ignited even further when I was in prison, because I realized hope is a superpower. When you don't have hope, then you're done, mm. literally done. My daughter, Oma, gave me that hope and kept that hope alive mm. to see a better tomorrow. And I keep this hope alive because I believe and I know we can get situations to a better place. These governments and bureaucracies and institutions that we build are here to serve us better. But it's because they are managed uh, shoddily, you know, that gets us to a place where they become oppressive to us. So if we turn that around, mm. things will get better. I'm very hopeful. When I see these women, I mean, Clean Start, we're a, a, a team of 20 now mm. who work on a daily basis at Clean Start. Half that team are women I met at Langata Women Maximum Prison. Mm -hmm. Some who are doing the reintegration. Our lead coach was at Langata. Uh, most of uh, our, our social media uh, lady 
was a langata. She's now almost joining university. Mm. A mother of three children. Yeah, actually, when I look at them, I see you know, there's that hope. there's hope. Some have, been, some have gotten jobs. As, 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 as uh, July 29th, a, a lady came out of prison. She's now joined our coaching team. Uh, another one got a job. So, and, and I see how they will, that translates not just for them, but for their children as well. There is hope if only each and every one of us can do that little good thing to turn the tide, things will turn around. Okay. And it's on that level, but also at Clean Start, I'm very keen to see systemic change, mm. to see that we've got an education that's inclusive of all these people who are being left left behind, mm. a judiciary that does what's right. That's I mean, true. in my case, for instance, Pastor Angie, I went into prison as the fallback guy. Well and good, I've started Clean Start and I've gotten compensated and things are going okay. But the people who orchestrated those crimes are still, are still out there. How many more so of innocent people paying prices while the guilty people are still out there? We can't have that. So there is hope. There is hope, and I'd urge the policy makers, get proximate to the issues. As you say, Pastor Angie, I would never have known what goes on in those prisons, yeah, the cries. Actually been in How are you writing policies of things you care about? That you haven't touched you have the lives touched. of the people. You, you don't even know who these people are. You're in this classy office, but you don't know what's going on in the ground. Mm. Get to the ground. Get to the ground and see these people who are, because these are lives. These are lives. These are lives. And I'm so happy that we're able to voice uh, these voices that have been silenced for too long. It's like they have been put in this pit that has been covered and their lives no longer matter. We're going on with life as if they're not part of our society. These are our brothers. These are our sisters. They are Kenyans just like we are. And they need to be included in all basic services, food, health, shelter, education, name it. They and need to be part of that and opportunities. And I think when we come back, I just want to discuss about uh, what Clean Start is doing. Mm -hmm. And then you told me Langata is one of the better prisons. Yes. You said if we go around the, is it for, Tidal, is for, for, other, for other counties that mm -hmm. people are really having a rough time yeah. in the prison. Mm -hmm. I hope you've been enjoying uh, watching us. And like I said, don't just watch, please. Don't be the people who watch, who cry. You experience your emotions, then you move back business as usual. Take action. Do something. Do some. You have to do something. Please see you next Monday for the final parts of this series with Teresa Chorobe. <laughs>